Hello, everybody. We are here with our Bologna guide, which is also going to be our first solo lane guide. So over in the solo lane right now, I like Warrior's Blessing. I like Tier 1 Boots um, and Chalice. Uh, there is an argument to be made for the... Um, there is an argument to be made for uh, starting the shields. But I'm trying not to focus too hard on the shields right now uh, because they are going to be taken out of the game. So while we're still going to build Berserker Shield in this match, I don't want to get too focused on them uh, because they are about to be completely changed uh, and reworked. So in the cell lane, we're going to be starting out our blue buff. Uh, this is to help our jungle clear through the jungle way faster. Uh, we want to get some damage off on uh, the camp, but we don't want to kill the small minions. If we kill the small minions, our jungler will not get level 2. If our jungle doesn't get level 2, they will be very sad. So starting off, we're going to talk about uh, Bologna's passive, uh, which has got to be one of my uh, favorite passives in the game. It is so good. Uh, Bologna gets... Five protections per stack and three movement speeds per stack of a max of five stacks. This happens every time that she gives or receives a basic attack. Every time you basic attack or every time you get hit by a basic attack, you get a stack. So that's up to 25 protections. Um, and 15% movement speed, which is just so good like just ridiculously good i've also opted for a blink instead of teleport um with the strategy that i like to run i like to avoid getting teleport when at all possible um if you don't get teleport in the solo lane and you end up dying you will get really really far behind um so i wouldn't necessarily recommend not getting teleport um as like a beginner um, but if you're confident that you're not gonna die which is you know famous last words when trying to do a guide video uh you can get away with a more aggressive active i particularly like blink um in the solo lane for getting into the back line and causing havoc all game long and it also still gives me um some movement but like i said if you die early or something goes horribly wrong uh you will regret not getting that teleport uh eventually so on Bologna, our uh, ability that we get first is our Bludgeon. Our Bludgeon is our uh, lane clear ability. And it does some pretty decent damage as well. So what Bludgeon actually does is it makes your AoEs, um, it makes your auto attacks AoE. Um, so you can see when I auto attack with my hammer out, I'm actually hitting all of the archers all at the same time, which is wonderful. Uh, which is going to allow me to actually clear these waves, which is also important for doing something like going uh, not teleport because we got to clear quick and potentially back quick. While in your hammer as well, you do a giant spin and a slam. Your spin portion of this ability does damage and so does the slam portion. I'm going to show you why I like blink on solo lane. I'm going to blink in. And I'm going to look for the hammer right here and then I'm going to throw down the whip. Ah, not quite going to get the kill, but I like being able to go for those kill opportunities in the solo lane really sneaksy treeksy like that um so you do spin damage and you also do slam damage the slam damage is more for every enemy god that you hit during the spin so you does an extra 25 percent damage per enemy god hit um, while in the spin. So the spin, 25% bonus damage, and then I slam down and I do that bonus damage. Um, all of Bologna's stances change her weapon. Her one, her two, and her three all change her weapon. All of these stances, uh, you keep the weapon out for five seconds. Five seconds, it will reset if you have not auto-attacked something. As long as you've auto-attacked something, you will keep that weapon out. Uh, whether it is the chalice, whether it is um, the totem. I actually might be in trouble here. I'm going to whip him so he can't use... 
Zeus is auto attacked, and I'm gonna waddle away. Waddle, waddle, waddle. That ghoul was not having any of it. Uh, that's just by default how all of our forms work. We're gonna get ourselves a ninja tabai, um, as well as a couple of wards over here, and I'm gonna have to walk back to the lane. Uh, we're gonna be going a slightly more aggressive solo laner build this game. Uh, this is because there was a lot of changes coming to solo particularly in regard to the efficacy of tanky Enemy items missing. with the addition of so much more percentage physical pen. Um, in my opinion, uh, it means that hybrid builds are going to be very popular in solo. You're not going to see these extra super tanky builds. They're going to be um, bruisery, but leaning into damage um, is my current um, my current thought on how those builds are going to transfer. So we're going to try to... We're going to try to build as if that were the case. So hammer is our main source of clear, and it is the ability that we are going to level to max first, trying to maximize all of that slam damage. The ability that we are going to get to max second is going to be our scourge, uh, commonly referred to as whip. This ability is line damage. It comes out pretty much instantaneously. Targets hit by the whip will be disarmed and take damage. You get a slightly extended auto attack range. So people kind of forget about this with whip, uh, but you get plus four on your auto attack range while your whip is out. And every time, uh, every three autos that you land, one, two, three, you will get a small heal. So that is once again a disarm when you use it, plus initial damage. Disarms and smite mean that the enemy opponent cannot auto attack. You get slightly extended auto attack range, plus four um, to auto attack range, uh, which is, you know, it's a little bit of an extended range. Um, I want to say baseline auto attack range and smite is either the number 12 or 16. I feel like is the base number, and I actually don't know off the top of my head. Maybe somebody um, will talk about it in the comments uh, or something. Uh, so that is the ability we're going to rank up second. The reason why we rank it up second uh, is because it increases the disarm duration and the amount of healing done, uh, not to mention the cooldown. But really what we're looking for here um, is the increase uh, in the disarm duration. It becomes a 2.2 second disarm, which is really good. That is really good. Also, it seems that baseline... Uh, auto attack range is in fact 12 so it becomes a 16 uh, with that extended range our one uh, is a ability that you're probably going to uh, see become very very good when combined uh, with the new height of the Nemean line in the next patch and that is going to be uh, shield bash shield bash is an ability that you don't actually rank up until last uh, this is because the major benefit from the ability you get just by having one point in it. I'm trying to hold my ultimate right now to ulti over uh, Osiris's ulti if he decides to go for it. Screw it. I'm going to go for it. I'm committing. Oh, I might not make it out of this. This is going to be close. Oh, I'm going to run this way. Oh, I'm going to try to die to creeps or a tower or something. Not going to be able to do that. That's okay. That was a big rotation and we still got the kill. Um... We are going to get our Berserker's Shield online right now. Like I said, Berserker Shield and Gladiator Shield are about to change a lot. So I wouldn't become too reliant on these items as they're getting totally reworked into Tier 3 items uh, with different passives starting July 14th. Back to talking about our Shield Bash. Our Shield Bash is a little bit of damage uh, and it's a little bit of slow. One thing people forget about um, the Shield Bash uh, is that it has a Reflect on it. This Reflect works um, with the block stacks. So for every god that you hit with Bash, you get You're one block nowhere. stack up to a maximum of three block stacks. Block stacks and smite mean that it completely stops an auto attack from hitting you. So it's particularly good against hunters, particularly good against hunters that build crit. So you get one stack by default just by hitting an enemy god with it. And then every um, three 
successful basic attacks, you generate another, um, you generate another stack of block. You generate another stack of block every three, uh, three autos. Have to be successful autos. You can't just, like, auto attack the air. And you can actually, um, uh, so you can have those three going, uh, and then you can use your shield bash again, and you can refresh them all. So if you hit three gods right with the shield bash immediately, you'll have right into three stacks. Uh, if you shield bash into nothing, uh, you won't have any block stacks uh, at the start. So it starts off with how many gods you hit with that shield bash. Uh, Bologna is considered a very, very good counter god. Uh, two hunters, uh, because she has the block stacks built into her kit, because she has a disarm, um, because she gains bonus protections, she is just a natural fit in order to fight against hunters. She's also pretty good against warriors, because block stacks are nice, but particularly against hunters and auto attack mages. Um, just like hunters, um, a Kronos, his auto attacks will be blocked, his abilities won't be blocked or anything. Um, by a block stacks or the disarm, but you will stop him on Oleron, Kronos, all that good stuff. Um, auto attack assassins work great. Um, uh, Bologna is great against um, Kali, Bologna, Mercury, anybody that is super reliant on using auto attacks, um, which means basically all hunters, but also some mages, some warriors, some uh, assassins, pretty much no guardians. On Bologna, our ultimate is Eagle's Rally. Eagle's Rally is a movement ability. Um, really one of Bologna's only movement abilities. Uh, her one technically is a movement ability, but it's so small I wouldn't even really count it. Uh, it can jump you over walls. And when you land down on your target, it is going to be a burst of damage. It is going to be a one second stun. Now, depending on how far you have um, this ranked up, it is going to place down a flag for a certain duration. The more points you have in your ultimate, the longer it places down that flag. What happens inside of that flag? Inside of that flag, you are going to give yourself and allies. Yourself and allies are going to get um, bonus power as well as bonus protections. And this is going to be inside the area where you place down your flag. It leaves a radius. As long as it's inside that radius, you will get those protections um, and power. And so will your teammates. Wow, there's a lot of people coming over to dive this. This is where this build is going to get very interesting. Uh, we are going to get a frost bound hammer um, for the slowing on the auto attacks. And I'm also going to get a Shogun's Kusari because they've got a lot of magic damage on this team. I've got a Berserker Shield, which gives a little bit of physical defense, the Frostbound, which is going to allow my autos to slow. And then I'm going to get the Shogun's Kusari, which is going to give me magical defenses, but also some attack speed to keep the procs up. The reason why we like attack speed on Bologna so much um, is really threefold. Step one, her passive. Obviously, the faster you get this going, the faster you get bonus protections and bonus movement speed. And that's off of successful autos. Step two, on year one, it's providing you with a faster reoccurring block chance. Because of being able to auto attack faster, that means you're getting the block chance up faster. Or for three on your whip, uh, your heal on your whip procs every three autos, which means... If you can attack faster, you will heal faster. So it's kind of an all-encompassing um, Bologna action when you get when you get that attack speed going. You have to be careful when laning against somebody like Osiris on Bologna. You can see I very specifically did not use my hammer while the tether was on me. That tether is going to uh, slow me. Uh, excuse me. That tether is going to uh, stun me after its duration ends. And I don't want to get interrupted uh, out of my bludgeon. Sun, day, light, gun. It's a Hebo again. There's the Hebo ultimate down. They are big fans of your boy right now. So our standard combination on Bologna is a little bit more, um, a little bit more thought out. 
Bologna can kind of feel like an Arthur-like character where you just roll your head on the keyboard, but that's not true. She actually does require a little bit more thought. So step one, you use your one and your ultimate as a gap closer. I'm probably dead here to this Hebo. I don't see me living through this unless AMA can somehow get me out. I give him a little frostbound proc and now I might be able to run away. Holy cow. I'd like to make a shout out to the bonus AMA movement speed and the bonus Bologna passive movement speed. Thanks. That's very kind of you. On Bologna, you're using your ultimate and your one as a gap closer slash um, initiation. Uh, just depending on where exactly you are starting your fight from. I love to get thorns on Bologna. Um, basically, my goal with Bologna is I don't want you to be able to auto attack me. And when you do, I want it to suck. That's my general idea um, with Bologna. So I build the extra attack speed so that I can have the extra block sacks, the extra healing. I build thorns. Um, in the next patch, you're going to want to make sure that you build your height of the Nemean line. Height of the Nemean line in the next patch is going to give two potential block sacks, which means that you can have the two potential block sacks from height of the Nemean line plus the three potential from your one reoccurring, which means that with the height of the Nemean line, you'll easily be able to get off um, five plus block stacks uh, in a team fight, which is such a big deal. I'm not using my hammer because I know I'm going to get stunned. I'm going to wait until after that is all said and done to use my hammer. Osiris ultimate is down. That's okay. I don't want to use my uh, thorns right now because I don't actually think this fight is going to continue necessarily long enough for that to happen. I probably should have bought some wards on my last back, actually in order to uh, give myself some more vision on kind of when this Kuzumbo and gang are gonna come for your boy. We're making friends. Switching over to my whip stance so I can just kind of auto attack him and heal up uh, while I'm sitting here not doing anything. His, I'm gonna switch to my one to slow him. Go ahead and use this big slam. I'm gonna go try to chase down this Osiris now because I know that he doesn't have his ultimate up. Unfortunately, there's Argus just beating cheeks. I'm gonna try to kill Argus, get him off the board, try to avoid some hair abilities. My blink is coming up. Blink, try to get in the auto attack range. I'm gonna wait now for this Aegis to whip him and get the kill. So like I said, before we got so rudely interrupted while we were trying to explain, one and four are gap closers to get in range of your auto attacks. Then once you get in range of your auto attacks, if you're slightly out of range, you flip over to your whip because your whip will give you that plus four auto attack range to get you in range of your frostbound hammer. Once you get the auto attack on them with the frostbound hammer, that's it for them. They're dunsies unless they can jump over a wall or something. There is no escaping. Your bludgeon is just used for general damage. Um, and like we mentioned earlier with the kit, if you can get yourself in range of more targets, if you can get yourself around more people with the spin, you'll continually build up 25% uh, more damage on that ability. And it can really, really become a big slam. In the laning phase, of course, you're just using that bludgeon um, for the clear on the wave, trying to um, out clear your opponent. Bologna has one of the better early game lane clears. Uh, the only exception to this is somebody that can consistently interrupt her out of her uh, out of her bludgeon. I'm gonna ulti right into this back line, throw down the whip and the damage onto Scotty. Now I'm gonna try to get a Hebo slam down right there with my bludgeon. You see, we were doing the gold fairy, and then I turned that fight immediately. And now I'm going to call for us to go to Fire Giant. I should be walking over there myself. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I started doing this because I wanted the purple buff for the extra attack speed. Uh, but we should go right to the Fire Giant right now. As Bologna, uh, your job is twofold. 80% uh, of the time, your job is going to be to initiate and to be an annoying frontline character. That's what it's going to be 80% of the time. Just run down, specifically trying to run down their auto attack based characters, their Kronoses, their Himes, their Hachi Mans, uh, whatever. Putting a Kali into combat so she can't blink on your back line. That's what you're looking for, right? You want to go for the auto attackers, that's what you thrive against. 
If you can't go on an auto attacker, that's okay. Generically going on their squishies is what your job is as the solo lane. Well done. Now, not necessarily every game are you going to be able to just be a big fat bruiser frontline kind of turn off your brain. Uh, sometimes you have to uh, be more peel oriented. Bologna does have the opportunity to peel if you need to. This game, we have a Ganesh and an AMA. We've got so much potential peel for my team, so all I want to worry about is getting up in Scotty's business, getting up in Harris' business. But if we had maybe a Neja support, maybe we had something like a Thanatos jungle, we didn't have so much peel. Because Bologna has a slow in the block stacks and the disarm and the stun, you can get in front um, of your back line and like stand in front of your Hachi man and just like peel for him. That is certainly a possibility. Uh, it is just not what Bologna is best at. Mostly you should be diving their back line in these team fights. Speaking of diving, I'm gonna zone out these guys right here. Attack I just want us to get this tier two tower, so I'm gonna stand here to zone out. That's your job as the solo laner, is to zone out. Get people scared of coming up. I'm gonna blink on the Scotty, slow her down. I'm gonna go ahead and ulti right on top of three, waiting for Hebo to throw down my whip as soon as he is out of that form, popping my thorns. I might die here. I'm gonna walk to the side, try to get out of that um, tower range, standing back in the raw heal. Coming back around the back again. I'm going to go for this Hera, slowing her around the back. I've been poly, but she has the Frostbound on her, throwing down my whip to get a little bit of extra auto attack range. I might be dead here. I've got to watch out for the Kuzenbo 3. I'm about to get a little bit of action on your boy. Looking back for the Kuzenbo since he is extremely low, whipping the Osiris so he can't auto attack me or my friends. Continually hitting him with that Frostbound Hammer. And now we can move. Actually, no. No, let's get out of here. Let's go attack middle lane. I thought about going for the Titan, but they have too uh, low on the respawn timers. Guys, middle tower. Middle, guys, middle tower. Mid tower. Yep. That awkward moment brought to you by uh, accidentally auto-attacking a Phoenix when the tier 2 tower uh, is still up, and that is okay. We've got raw heal up. I'm going to go directly for Scotty. I'm holding right in, looking for Scotty. He is slowed already. He is slowed again. That was a good beat. I am tanking this Phoenix. I'm going to reset it back to my, um, hopefully, Ganesh was tanking it. He is not, unfortunately. Now they're getting a lot of respawns. We do have the raw heal up again. We got to put down Argus first because we got to get out of here, unfortunately. We uh, didn't quite land the raw ulti on the Scotty, which is okay. It happened. She beat. It was a good beat. We just got to slowly back it up before we lose everybody off of this. I'm going to throw down the whip so that he can't get auto-attacked. I can't do anything to help out the team at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal this red buff to make sure that they don't get it. There's no gold fury up. There's no fire giant up. They're just going to shove down mid. That's fine. They're not going to be able to get a phoenix off this. I'm going to do the oracles to make sure that we have vision on the gold fury in case they decide to come this way after they push a tower or two. And I'm also going to try and get myself our buffs so that they can't come and invade our buffs uh, as soon as they grab this. I'm going to stick around. I'm the solo laner. This is kind of my job to stick around and look for some action and make sure they don't get too much farm off of this. Too much stolen farm. Looked like they're only going to get a tier one tower. I'm going to see if anybody got greedy, went for our blue buff. No, they did not. Perfect. Now we go and we go get set up for the gold fury. So next up on my item list, I'm going to be going a Pridvin. Uh, you can kind of see the theme to this build. Uh, which is annoying auto attacks uh, and annoying slows. That theme of the build is going to stay with us throughout this entire thing. So Pridvin is going to mean after we ulti in, we ulti in with Blona, boom! We get ourselves a little bitty shield, and if they break the shield or if the shield um, breaks on its own, it is going to slow everybody around me. So that way, if I can't quite get in range of my Frostbound Hammer, I might be able to get in range of my Pridvin slow, which will then let me get in range of my frostbound hammer of course always having the one and the three to help me get in range of that stuff as well but because we want to use that ulti for initiation uh particularly um under like phoenixes um with Bologna ulti reminder that everybody in that you see that big circle that big circle is the buff radius and it lasts now um for 10 seconds since i am level 20 
We want to shove up with the Oni creeps immediately. That means that I want to ulti right in the Phoenix range so that my team has that bonus power and those bonus protections um, for trying to take the Phoenix. You want to make sure your team has all those bonus protections for trying to take the Phoenix, for trying to live through that. I'm going to try to run over to right lane. Let's see if we can't go gank this. I'm going to blink slow Hebo right now. I'm going to get the double proc on my... I'm trying to get to the back line. I'm going to whip the Scotty and then attack the puppy. I disarmed that Scotty in the back line. You can see an example of Bologna peeling. Uh, my raw was in trouble. One more auto attack would have killed him, so I walk back. I throw down the whip. That way, he can't quite be finished. Throwing down a little ultimate over this Hera 2 in the back line. Throwing down my Thorns. I'm continually keeping this slow on um, Scotty right now. I'm not going to be able to finish him, but that's actually okay. Because I should be able to dash back safely into this right side Phoenix while finishing off Argus. Throwing down a whip on Osiris, so Osiris can't go ahead and ulti my raw on the back line. It has officially now run out. Throwing down the slow, looking for the Osiris. He is causing some problems, avoiding this Hera. Heading back in. Throwing down the whip once again on Scotty, so she can't auto attack. I need to be careful uh, for this Hebo. As long as we get a raw heal down, I should be able to start tanking this. No problemo. Ultimate is up in 10 seconds. I'm going to reset that as we get the creeps in. Now it should reset to the creeps. Once again, throwing down my whip onto Scotty. She has to be the priority target for my whip. I want to dive Scotty. Ulting right in on top of him for the stun. Waiting for my whip to come up. Whipping. Don't even need the extra damage. And now we should be able to go ahead and finish off the Titan while healing up with our whip. That, guys, is how you are looking to play Bologna solo. You get so naturally tanky from your passive, from the disarm, from the block stacks. Of course, you also get those bonus protections on your ulti. You have so many built-in protections. So what I like to do is give myself a little extra attack speed to really maximize the one and the three. Don't forget to use your ultimate, of course, as a team-wide buff. Um, I didn't use it on an objective that game, but you can use it on a fire giant to give yourself the buff around fire giant. Um, you can use it around phoenixes like I was using it to give your team the buffs um, around the, the phoenix as well. All good uses of her ultimate. Making sure to utilize things like Frostbound Hammer that are really good with her passive. And of course, Berserker Shield while you got it. But it does go away uh, on the 14th. Uh, so you won't have that exact uh, build. But the idea of the build will still be very solid.